Jane Logie. Et te mangai o te whare tēnā koe. Kia koutou huri noa e te whare tēnā koutou katoa. Nā mihi o te wiki o te reo māre kia tātou katoa. Kā te o mō nā kākariki ki te kōrero o te pāno e tanga tua tōru o tēnē te peri. Social Security, Extension of Young Person Services and Remedial Matters Amendment Bill. Kia ora tātou. Kia ora. Excuse my mangling of the language. Um, the Green Party is voting against the Social Security Extension of Young Person Services and Remedial Matters Amendment Bill. And for many of the reasons that were demonstrated by that previous speaker, who stood up and listed statistic after statistic of the problems with our young people. That member demonstrated so clearly the government's deficit model when it comes to understanding the potential of our young people. This piece of legislation does a disservice to our young people young people and we will not be supporting it. I must say, I've spent over almost a decade of my life working alongside young people in education, youth health and development organisations and I have loved this work. I have felt it a complete privilege to work alongside young people and experience the inspiration of their resilience, their creativity and smarts when they've been given the opportunity to deliver based on the belief that they can. This legislation is the antithesis of that experience. I think generally it's a well understood concept that if you treat a person, particularly a young person, like an idiot, they're probably going to fulfil your expectations. This was proven, actually, in years of research and experience that led to the development of a strength-based approach to youth development. Old approaches to youth development focused on problems. They were reactive, targeted tightly, and tended to deliver programs with professional providers putting young people in the place of being recipients of services. This approach took lots of resources, but the results tended to be short term or not so successful. Positive youth development, strength based youth development, turned this on its head. And the programs or the initiatives were developed in partnership with young people. They involved community members and sought to develop a community response to supporting young people. It was proactive, not targeted, and looking towards positive outcomes, not looking at problems or deficit model. If you start with focusing on what someone is good at and go from there, ehara, they're more likely to believe they have possibilities. And conversely, if you start with a focus on risk, then surprise, there's a much higher chance young people will either just do what they're told for as long as they're made to, rebel or give up hope in themselves, rather than develop the skills and attributes in themselves that will sustain them throughout their lives. This we know from practice, this we know from evidence. This is not what this legislation is about. And when the chair of the Social Services Committee stood up previously and told us that we obviously hadn't read the Productivities Commission's report around how to work with young people, I've got to say I've read the report, but I don't think they're the experts on strengths-based youth development and how to work with young people. They are not. This legislation extends the bad old ways of working. It starts from the point of telling us some young people are at risk of being a long-term liability to the state, <laughs> of being beneficiaries. This legislation assumes that all parents who have the children before the age of 20 who are not working enough hours or being supported by a partner who's earning enough is at risk. 
We're no longer talking about children under the age of 18 here. We are talking about young parents up to the age of 20. It's even more tightly targeted and risk-based too when it comes to young people, young adults without children. Because to develop this legislation, the government is going to use predictive risk modelling, taking information from other state services like education and the existing child, youth and family and whatever it might become, to decide what young people might be too might be at risk of long-term welfare dependence. And the chances are, and we have to keep acknowledging this, that most of these young people will be Māori rangatahi, because contact with child, youth and family is one of the factors that they have said they will use to define risk. And almost 60% of those young people in care are Māori. So these young people will be separated from their peers who will not who are not deemed to be a risk, and without any choice on their part, they will be subject to, an to, in addition to the work test or work preparation obligations, budgeting, interviews, reporting obligations, alongside money management supervision, which will pay most of their bills for them and require them to only shop primarily at certain stores. And these are adults we are talking about, <laughs> 19 and 20 year olds. And of course, if they miss an interview or don't provide the information required in enough time, their benefit will be cut completely. As well as this increased scrutiny, young parents up to the age of 20 will need to go to work or into low level stage study from the age that their baby is one or if a teen parent unit is available from the age where their baby is six months old. These are young adults who we know are already so likely to have been told they're a problem at school, in society, and over a long period of time already. And now they're going to be told it again by this government. Let me be clear, this is not a strength-based approach. Let me be clear, this is not an empowering piece of legislation. What this legislation does is it infantilizes and stigmatizes young people, entrenches and exacerbates already painful inequalities. It makes young people the problem and fundamentally alters their relationship with people in their community who could have worked alongside them in a positive way. Increasing international evidence shows that interventions that work best are less targeted and unconditional and involve extra money, the exact opposite of this program. So we do not, in the Green Party, support a measure that uses our precious resources to increase targeting and conditions and is strongly risk-based rather than strengths-based. The government tells us that despite not having a comprehensive evaluation of the initial program, they're extending it because they have aspiration for these young parents and young people and they're willing to invest in them now. Well, I do just want to remind this House that repeatedly, when this government has been given the opportunity to increase those young people's access to higher education above the level of NCEA Level 2, which we know is likely to get them off these benefits six months earlier and enable them to stay off these benefits longer, they turned down that opportunity. And the um, costings of how that much that extra that would have cost to be able to extend it to higher level courses was only $10 million. But apparently, these young people aren't worth that $10 million. While the government tells us that they have high aspirations, we're well, not that high. And again, when this government has been given the opportunity to put safeguards in place to protect the children of these parents, to not, to give the person who may end up 
applying sanctions, the discretion not to apply that sanction if it would make it difficult to feed, clothe or care for the well-being of that child, this government turned down that opportunity. They are demonstrated that they do not fundamentally put children first, they do not have aspirations for our young people or our society, and the Greens will be strongly opposing this bill. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Derek.